In this video, we're going to take a look at a pretty light example of a Taylor polynomial. Uh, in the last video, we did a lot of theory explaining what Taylor polynomials were, but we didn't really have a chance to work any examples out. Uh, this example in particular here, you'll find in most calculus textbooks, and most instructors use this example as kind of their first example to, um, to work out a Taylor polynomial uh, just because the algebra is pretty light and, and that sort of stuff. So if you're looking for a more challenging example, you might want to move on to some of our, our examples after this video. But nevertheless, if this is your first time seeing Taylor polynomials, this is a, a pretty good place to start. All right, so here's what we're trying to do. We're trying to find a degree five polynomial. So that'll be not a, not a linear function, not a quadratic, not a cubic, not a degree four, but a degree five polynomial that bends and turns that will approximate e to the x, that exponential growth function. And we also have to know where is centered. See, uh, wherever is centered, the approximation will be very good. And as you move away from the center, the approximation worsens. So you have to make a decision on where you want the approximation done well, and then we'll define that to be our center. All right, now let's remind ourselves, what's the definition of a Taylor polynomial? Well, here it is. A polynomial of degree n will be the function, in this case, e to the x, evaluated at, in our case, 0, plus e to the x's derivative evaluated at 0, times x minus 0, plus so on and so forth. Uh, and we'll do this for uh, a total of uh, five derivatives, uh, up to degree 5, right? up to x minus 0 to the fifth power. Uh, as this degree changes, you'll do more or less terms. right? Now, this is something you'll need to commit to memory. I know it looks pretty big and ugly and nasty, but there are patterns to be seen here. Uh, notice that your x minus c simply goes up by a factor of one each time, and they're all over these n factorials. Now you might look at these two guys here and say, well, well, Devin, what about these? These don't have factorials. They actually do, you just don't see them. Here's three factorial and two factorial. This is divided by one factorial. One factorial, there was one, and that's why you don't see it. This is divided by zero factorial. Zero factorial is also one, which is why we don't see it. Um, this guy doesn't look like he has an x minus c, but he's, it's really x minus c to the zero, which is why that's not there. So really it's the same pattern for all of these terms. So we'll just commit this to memory. This will be pretty important for us. Okay, so let's get started. Basically all we need to do is we have to find all of these things related to f and then plug them in the formula. All right, so for instance, I need uh, e to the zero so f of x equals e to the x, and e to the 0 is 1. I'll need f prime. Now and now you're starting to see why, why we use this as our first example. The derivative is still e to the x. Uh, a slightly more challenging example would be f of x equals e to the 2x, because then we'd have 2e to the 2x, and, and it would be a little bit more substantial. But for, um, but for this one, I think this is fine. Second derivative is e to the x. Uh, so is the third, the fourth, and the fifth. So fourth derivative is e to the x, and fifth derivative is e to the x. So I know it looked kind of redundant writing all those, but just know in another example that's a little harder, a little larger, these will all be different derivatives. And so you'll actually have to compute all five derivatives. Now, after you compute all those derivatives, you also have to plug in zero. So if you plug in zero, this will be one. And actually all of these will be uh, one. And again, if this was a, a different function that had derivatives that changed, then these numbers would all be different. But like I said, this is a light example, just trying to get our feet wet here. All right, so basically we're gonna take this guy and just fill in the numbers that we just found. So here we go. So we want a polynomial of degree five, and this will be e to the zero, which is one, e prime, or the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x, evaluated at 0, which is uh, 1, times 
x minus c, but ours is centered at zero. So x minus zero. All right, plus f double prime at z over two factorial times x minus zero squared plus, and we're gonna continue this pattern on until we get to our very last term, the fifth derivative of e to the x evaluated at zero, which is one, over five factorial times x minus zero to the fifth power. So this is the polynomial of degree five that will approximate e to the x. Now, uh, clearly we can clean this guy up a little bit. I think we can make this look a lot better. Let's see, p sub five of x, polynomial degree five, that'll be one plus x plus, let's, let's read off these terms again, plus x plus x squared over two factorial, x squared over two factorial, and if you're paying attention to the pattern, the next one will be x to the third over three factorial, x to the fourth over four factorial, plus, and let's look at the very last one as well, x to the fifth over five factorial. So that, that'll be the last term. So x to the fifth over five factorial. So we can write it this way. Uh, or if you prefer to not see those factorials all over the place, you can say one plus x plus x squared over two plus x cubed over six, that's three factorial, plus x to the fourth over four factorial is 24, and x to the fifth over five factorial, which is 120, okay? So this is a, a polynomial of degree five, no doubt, but uh, I think you'll be most impressed by uh, seeing on a graph how he approximates e to the x. This guy looks almost like e to the x. It's pretty amazing. So uh, let's open up our, our calculator here. I went ahead and took the liberty of typing in e to the x and the polynomial just to save us a little bit of time. And so now if we adjust our window and all that good stuff, here, let's, let's adjust our window, uh, minus 10 to 10, and just kind of your, your standard minus 10 to 10 for the Y's as well. Then we will push graph. Okay. And the first one you'll see is the exponential curve. And then here's the degree five polynomial. Now, you might not can see it. I mean, you might have to zoom in here to, to really appreciate this, but if you look at my cursor, this cursor is following the exponential graph and it's the polynomial as well. It's amazing how accurate this is. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll, try to, I'll try to zoom in a little bit. Let's maybe do like minus four to four and minus four to four. Maybe, maybe we'll see this a little bit better. Okay, I zoomed in a little bit. Okay, there's e to the x. Here comes that degree five polynomial. Man, it's phenomenal how well he approximates it. Now, does he approximate it well everywhere? No, if you look at the left-hand side of the graph, you see e to the x goes one way and my polynomial goes another way. So the approximation is not very good out here, but my goodness, around zero, these are right on top of each other. It's just a phenomenal approximation. So anyways, um, hopefully this light uh, introduction example gets you started down the right track. Now you can try some more complicated examples, but at the very least, I hope you now appreciate Taylor polynomials a little bit better and understand just how well they approximate different functions.